Hi, this is Gary with MacMost.com. Let me show you how you can navigate around to buttons and other objects on your Mac's screen using just the keyboard. MacMost is brought to you thanks to a great group of more than a thousand supporters. Go to MacMost.com slash Patreon. There you could read more about the Patreon campaign. Join us and get exclusive content and course discounts. Now I know I've got a lot of keyboard shortcut fans out there. You love to do everything with your keyboard if at all possible minimizing the use of the mouse and trackpad. But what happens when you get to a screen like a save dialog or a print dialog where there are a bunch of buttons and other controls and there are no keyboard shortcuts for those. You've got to just move your hand to the trackpad and then navigate around with the pointer to get what you want done. But usually you can stick with the keyboard even when it doesn't look like there's a keyboard shortcut. For instance, here I am on a web page and I'm going to use Command S to save the page. Now I'm in the save dialog. And I know I could type and that would change the name up here and I could press return and that would activate the default button in this case save. I could even use the escape key or command period to cancel. But what if I want to use one of the other controls here? Well it doesn't look like there's a way to do that. These aren't menu items. These are things on the screen that you need to move the pointer over and click to actually use. But actually you can use the keyboard in most cases to get to most things. The key to doing that is the Tab. Watch what happens when I use Tab. If I keep using it you can see how it jumps to different elements on the screen and once an element is focused I can actually use that element. So for instance if I go to this element right here I can use the down arrow key, select something new spacebar to select it and now I've changed something. If I want to change the location here I can select a new one and press return or I can just get to another element like search over here and start typing there. All by just using the keyboard. Now if this isn't working for you make sure you have this feature turned on. It's called keyboard navigation and it's fairly straightforward in Mac OS Ventura to turn it on because it's under system settings and then go down to keyboard and then just look for keyboard navigation and make sure that's switched on. Some of this will actually work with keyboard navigation turned off. But to get the full control of the Tab key to move through elements you want this turned on. So now you can see how I can move through various parts of this and then use the arrow keys to do other things. I can't get access to everything though. If I go through here you can see at no time I'm actually selecting the elements in this list here. So I can't really navigate around in there. But there are other ways to navigate as well. For instance all of the Finder shortcuts. As long as I am in the Save As box up here I can use something like say Command D to go to the desktop or Shift Command G to bring up the Go menu and then type a path. But it's contextual so it depends on what I have selected at the time I try to use those shortcuts. Even Command F will take me right here to the search field. So it's worth playing around in this interface to see what you can do. Now what if I would go to Print, Command P. So I end up with this dialog right here and you see with the Tab key I can do the same thing. I can move around through the different elements and then use other keys like arrow keys or just typing to modify things. And note that you can always use Shift and Tab to go backwards. So if you pass something and you don't have to loop all the way around you can just use Tab to go forwards, Shift, Tab to go backwards. And note that this functionality isn't built directly into every single dialog or interface. So there's not special code just in the print dialog here to handle this. It's universal throughout the system which means that sometimes it's not perfect. So if I were to tab through here every once in a while I tab to something that just doesn't appear to be anywhere. Like now I can't see what I'm doing. It's actually accessing items that are below what's visible here. But other times it doesn't seem to be anywhere. Just keep using Tab to go to the next element. Sometimes it's grabbing onto invisible elements or inactive elements. But if you keep using Tab you'll eventually get to what you want. Now this works in more places than just in dialog boxes. For instance here I am on this web page and if I use Tab here notice it's going to different elements, different links and buttons and such both in the navigation bar at the top but also throughout the page. Sometimes you kind of get stuck like here I am stuck on this element here. I can usually use the Shift tab to go backwards through elements and you can see how it kind of ends right there. So you have to play around with it to get what you want. 
But if it's something you need to do over and over again in a particular interface pretty quickly you get used to how to get there. Now one problem you'll run into is when you're actually in an interface where you're typing something. So here I am inside of Pages and I can type something and I can also press Tab and as I would expect the tab is entered in to the document. So how do I tap through the different elements? Well it depends on the app. And a lot of apps though, like Pages, if I use the Control, that's the Control key not Command, and Tab, it takes me out of the current interface and now I can continue to Tab and you can see how it's going to go through different elements here in the sidebar and throughout the rest of the Pages interface until eventually I end up back inside of the body text and you can see now I'm just adding characters. So there is a way to get to sidebar elements if you really want. This doesn't work great in the Finder window because using Tab will actually take you to different elements here inside of the Finder window. Trying to get to these other elements is pretty difficult. But possible. If I do Control Tab it seems to take me out of it but then just using Tab pretty quickly brings me back in. But if I do Control Shift Tab to take me out of it and kind of move backwards then I find that eventually I do end up inside of these other elements here. I'll release Control here and just use Shift Tab to go through different elements. So you have to kind of play around with it but eventually you do find ways to get to where you want. It's just that in some apps and some situations it works really well in an obvious way and in other apps and other situations it seems very counterintuitive and it's probably not very useful. Now there is a next level to this. If you go to System Settings and then to Accessibility and then you go down to Keyboard there's Full Keyboard Access. And then you can read about Full Keyboard Access here. If you turn this on then there's a ton you can do. You can see how it highlights what's selected and you could move through different elements using the Tab key like that and it's much more obvious what you're selecting. The only problem is if you don't use this all the time it kind of gets in the way. You can always hold the Tab key down and press H and it will give you some help there. Use the Escape key to get out of that. And then it's all about moving two different groups of controls and then using the arrow keys to move within those groups. It's much more involved and really meant for people that cannot use a mouse or trackpad at all. But it is an option you can explore if you like. So in practice I think a combination of things is still needed. Sometimes it's just easier to use the mouse and trackpad to navigate an interface. But if you find yourself often at an open dialog or a save dialog but then you learn that a few taps on the tab key and maybe using the space bar and arrow keys get you what you need then you can maybe switch to using keyboard only in those specific situations. Hope you found this useful. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video click the thumbs up button below to let me know. I publish new tutorials each weekday. Hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out.